it feels like the fighting is really intensifying uh, in the Donbass region. Um, what is your update on what the situation is? Yes, unfortunately, there is um, fierce fighting ongoing in the east of the country and unfortunately also bombardments of uh, cities across the country uh, are continued by Russian Federation. Also, uh, fighting is ongoing in the northern eastern part and, and southern part of Ukraine. So the situation is not getting easier on us and that's why for us uh, it's extremely important that there is a continued stream of um, military support coming to Ukraine uh, because the urgency, the quality and the quantity of the weaponry that could be provided by our partners is basically critical for our ability to withheld this, um, this attacks. It feels as if much of the story of the war so far has been about Ukrainian success in repelling forces from Kyiv, uh, in taking back some territory uh, more recently. Are you concerned that as Russia focuses on the east of the country, that narrative might be changing? You know, uh, it's not about the narrative. We don't have uh, many options on the table. We have to survive in this war that uh, when the aggressor has come to erase us from the map of the world and we want to live and want to build our country and want to preserve our nation. So uh, therefore we have to win. Um, and that might require all resolve, that might require all our ability to fight uh, and, and a lot, unfortunately. It already takes a lot, a lot of, of Ukrainian, best Ukrainians' lives um, from the military and also from the civilians. Um, so therefore, um, it's not about the narrative. We have to push it, uh, push it against Russian feder Federation. And yes, unfortunately, at this particular moment, when Russia has gathered all its military capacity in the in the east of the country, uh, we are losing some of the territories, and um, and and they are. Um, staying in the, at this particular moment in the, the hands of occupiers. But we hope there will be a moment and the possibility for us to, to get those territories and people back. You're talking about uh, the need for more weapons, for more uh, supplies from uh, the West. What is the situation uh, with supplies? There have been some reports about people even running out of ammunition. Well, the supplies are coming in and we are extremely grateful for all those nations that are making this effort and that are um, also show, showing example to those who have been hesitating or who have been much slower uh, on this track. But at this particular moment, definitely, this is still not enough for us to have the uh, enough artillery capability, enough uh, um, multiple uh, launch rocket systems capability to fight back all that, uh, all those rockets and artillery and tanks that that are um, coming from Russian Federation. They are not counting the, they are not counting the munitions. They they have just uh, more than enough. While sometimes, unfortunately, in some of the areas, the ratio of our weaponry is one to ten with the Russians. Yeah, that really is a pretty stark um, example there, that, that ratio that you've just given to us. There's been a bit of criticism from some, about some European countries about being too slow uh, to show support for Ukraine. Do you feel that that's changed this week uh, with the news from the EU that you've been given membership candidate status and also, of course, the visit uh, to Ukraine uh, from the leaders of Germany, France and Italy? I think it was very important visit um, of those of those leaders of the EU, and uh, very important that they have finally made up their minds uh, to support the candidacy of Ukraine uh, to join the the European Union. However, I would uh, also like to, to underline that does that uh, that decision, uh, which I think is um, is totally, you know right thing to do at this particular moment for Ukrainian people and for Ukrainian state um, should not dismiss the other needs of, of, uh, of our country. And those are, um, we call it, I call it as a major humanitarian aid for Ukraine in terms of um, actually getting weaponry 
unfortunately, we are not getting enough from those uh, particular states. And uh, well, like, like Germany has been giving smaller weaponry, and uh, we understand that that was already a big change in their policy. But uh, so far, heavy weaponry does not come really from 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 that country. And I think it's a big mistake of Germany trying to kind of postpone those decisions uh, so far. But I hope that after you know Chancellor Scholz and after the the uh, other leaders have actually seen the uh, ruins and destruction that uh, Russians have uh, have brought on our land near near Kyiv uh, with their own eyes. Maybe that could change their actually personal um, readiness to take the decisions on additional weaponry for for us to protect yeah. because we are protecting ourselves. And how does it contrast with the UK? Uh, Boris Johnson, of course, made his visit, second visit to Kyiv this week. You know, we uh, extremely appreciate um, his visits and his real, uh, very clear stance on the need to support uh, Ukraine by the free uh, world, by free countries. And we are uh, we are grateful for his leadership. I think uh, to an extent, maybe his visit has kind of balanced the, the need to talk and prioritize the security and, and the military assistance at this particular moment in comparison to what the other leaders uh, the day before have been uh, talking about. So we would like others to, to also um, follow the path and follow the, the example of, of Britain in terms of Britain and the US uh, in terms of helping us with the, with the weaponry. And just finally, you know, I've been talking to you as a politician so far, and I'd like to kind of finish by talking to you as a mother. Um, I've you know, read some of your interviews previously, and I think you're a mum of teenagers. And I just wonder how it is for you, um, you know, having the children in the middle of a war. How do you parent? How do you explain to them what is going on? And how do you make them feel reassured? Uh, thank you for asking. I think this is probably the, the most challenging part of our jobs today, so to say, um, to, to ensure that, um, that they are getting that support that, uh, and, and that we are there for them uh, because we, we cannot, unfortunately, spend enough time with our kids um, at all at this particular moment when you are preoccupied uh, with serving the country and you actually sometimes you have to actually choose the the responsibility um, in front of the country uh, as a first and major option and then and then going um, going and helping um, even psychologically or you know emotionally helping your children but we are trying to to do that all of us uh, who are moms uh, in uh, who are in the parliament or in the governmental positions uh, it's tough. They are, I think, uh, the generation of our kids. That's uh, my feeling from what my, my daughters are telling me. Uh, one is 16, another is 19. Um, and the, this is the generation that will not forgive Russians. Um, in, in the, the, the destruction, the death, the, uh, the, the pain that they have brought on our land. And it's not because we are teaching uh, them this. It's because what they are watching and how they are watching uh, the situation developing and how they are becoming, um, you know, very... Uh, Full, full, they are full of pain. Uh, they are full of desire to engage and to help. So they are volunteering for for different things and 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 trying to do their their least uh, at least something that they can do uh, their most uh, to 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 help also the armed forces. And that's um, I think shows also the the incredible unity of the of the society because uh, the society is comprised of of those little tiny bits um, and little human stories uh, that they have. And, you know, I hope they can come back to, to Kiev. They are not in Kiev in this particular moment. They really want to go to, to come back home. Uh, but uh, so far, we do not feel that it is safe enough for them to be, to be home. That's a really, I uh, hope that situation changes for you uh, soon and that you know, Kiev is thank safe you. enough for your daughters to return. Um, thank you so much for talking to us uh, this week. Thank you. Thank you.